Well, if you are a member of my email alert uh, program, you receive detailed information about the military ouster of Mr. Morse in Egypt. Whether it is a coup or whether it is just a takeover by mandate by the uh, masses in Egypt will be debated for a long time. Frankly, I believe it was probably more of a takeover by the military by popular demand. Mr. Morse was considered a weak leader by virtually all analysts and spent more time trying to set up the Muslim Brotherhood and himself as the premier and dominant force in, the, uh, uh, in Egypt's political realm. Of course, when this takeover took over or took place uh, back uh, year, one year ago when Mr. Morse was democrat democratically elected as president, many tried to say he was the cruel lord that is described in Isaiah 19.4. But frankly, I don't believe he ever rose to the level that uh, is talking about in verse 4 where it says, In Egypt, and the Egyptians will... Uh, I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Now some may debate that and say, yeah, he was, he had a short reign, but he still reigned over Egypt. Frankly, I don't believe that's the case. I think he's still to come, and I think there's a danger. You know, some people are going to scoff at this and say, no, that was him, and this is Isaiah 19. The truth of the matter is, it's like saying that the rapture's already taken place when indeed the rapture is still future. I still believe this situation is still future for the uh, Egyptian people. And I think that will be proven out as time goes on. Now, are we in the midst of Isaiah 19? I think we're probably in the beginning stages, and it probably started uh, back when Israel became a nation. And if you look at verse 3, it says, And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the council thereof, and they shall seek... Uh, to, to the idols and to the charmers and to the familiar spirits and to the wizards. Now I think that uh, Egypt's in, that, in, in the midst of that right now where they simply don't know what to do. And it says in verse 6, it says, And the waters shall fail from the sea, and the river uh, shall be wasted and dried up, and they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up, and the reeds and the, and the flags shall wither. Again, I think that we are in the midst of that possibly happening uh, and, and becoming a reality, but more so in the future. If you look at verse 8, it says, The fishers all shall, shall mourn, and all they that cast angle into the brook shall lamb it. And if you go down to verse 14, it says, The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they, shall, uh, and they have caused Egypt to err, in every work thereof, as drunken man staggered in his vomit. Again, I think that that right now, this is where they're in the beginning stages of that uh, as we speak. And going on to verse 15, it says, Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail, branch or brush may do. And in verse 16, it says, In that day shall Egypt be like unto uh, women, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the head of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. Now, I, now that, like I said, I believe that will be uh, in the future. And moving on to verse 17, it says, And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid of himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it. Now, here is a key. It says, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. In that day, now verse 19, In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the uh, border thereof uh, to the Lord. Well, obviously, this uh, prophecy hasn't taken place yet. There are now five cities uh, in Egypt that speak the land of Canaan, nor are there five cities uh, in Egypt that are prominently serving the Lord. But as this turmoil in Egypt persists, you may see five cities crop up who will be inhabited by Coptic Christians who will uh, flee, uh, flee to these cities and become the dominant population. That very well may be, become the case. But I fully expect the... Uh, uh, problems in Egypt to persist, but to persist even further and greater 
as we enter into the tribulation period. But I think as we uh, move along, uh, you're going to get to verse 21. It says, uh, And the Lord shall be known in Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day. And I think that day is going to be toward the end of the tribulation period and on into the millennium. And shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. In verse 22, And the Lord shall smite Egypt, he shall smite and heal it. And they shall turn even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. And in that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Syria, and the Egyptian shall serve with the Assyrians. And in that day shall Israel be the third with, with Egypt and with Syria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. And verse 25 ends with says, Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, uh, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. Now I believe this will be a time, this will be during the time uh, at the end of the tribulation period and into the beginning of the millennium when this uh, further part from, uh, I believe, verse 20 to verse 25 will take place. But let me say this once more. I do not believe that this cruel uh, ruler, this uh, fierce king will or has materialized yet. I believe that is still yet future. I know we are tempted when we see things happen, such as what happens happened in Syria, uh, to believe that uh, the prophecy of Isaiah 17, 1 is about ready to take place. I simply don't believe that's going to take place until the tribulation period. And it's certainly not taking place now. But we are tempted to uh, take a location and try to apply it to a prophecy just because of a flare-up or a war takes place. We think that this is the fulfillment of a prophecy. And over the last year or so, I have followed a couple of YouTube prophecy watchers who have uh, stated that they felt that uh, Isaiah 19 was being fulfilled and that Mr. Morsey was indeed the fierce king spoken of in this chapter. But he came and he went and, frankly, was never considered a fierce king by anyone, uh, especially the military analyst uh, and prominent military uh, and intelligence websites never considered him a powerful king. They only considered him weak. But at least one that I have listened to so far continues to say that he was the fierce king. I would hope that he would have said, hey, I was wrong and, didn't, and that this man was not the fierce king, but uh, he's... He's still hanging in there saying that this was uh, Isaiah 19 fulfilled and that uh, this is the fierce king. Now I will be watching this other particular individual to see if they will indeed try to correct themselves and to try to set people on the right path. And I think he will. I have a whole lot more respect for his ministry. And for the most part, I would recommend him to others. But I will see if that's the case in the coming days uh, when he presents another report. But I did want to weigh in on this situation and to uh, try to set people straight and on the right path as to where this prophecy is at. But whatever you might believe, uh, this is these are the last days and the Lord is coming, and likely quicker than you think. So my encouragement to you is that if you are listening to this uh, report and you do not know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. I would recommend very strongly that you come to the Lord as quickly as possible if that indeed is not the case. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.